<laughs> Thanks. Conversation, the context for this weekend, spiritual sacred activism. I like to take a little bit of a tweak on that. Because when we hear the word activism, how many of us think of a very specific kind of type of action or type of person that would create the word of activist? How many of us have kind of a, a label around that? A few of us, okay. So when we hear activism or activists, we oftentimes think those people who are doing a certain thing to make a difference in the world. But my experience, beginning with living in a tree for two years and eight days, my experience has taught me that no choice happens in a vacuum. And so therefore, every single choice changes the world. Because no choice happens in a vacuum, every thought, every word, every action absolutely has impact. It's actually scientifically, spiritually impossible to make no difference. It's actually impossible. <laughs> Darn! That means we've got to be a lot more responsible for the power of our lives, doesn't it? The gift in this is to realize that like 7 billion of us are activists. And the shift comes from are we being conscious or unconscious? Because either way, we're being activists. For those of you who were in the workshop this morning that I was blessed to co-facilitate with Johnny, you'll hear a few things again. And I hope that it just reignites something new and alive for you and doesn't bore you too much. But there's certain themes that just feel really relevant for me, and this is one of them. For us to realize that every single time we make a choice to do something or not do something, to speak or not speak, whatever it is, every time we're actually shaping our reality, we're changing our world because it is actually impossible to make no difference. The amount of times people have come up to me and said, thank you, Julie, for showing us that one person can make a difference. And my response has always been, no. It's not, can we make a difference? It is, we do make a difference. We do. And so the question then shifts from one that's kind of playing into the victim role of, I don't know if I can make a difference or not, to being one of, I do make a difference. And so the question then becomes, what kind of a difference do I want to make? What kind of difference does my heart want to see in the world? What kind of difference does my soul call me into being and modeling in the world? It's such a profoundly different way to live our lives. In case you can't tell, the minute I start talking about it, I'm like, whoa! <laughs> I get on fire with it because it, I just had this experience that recognizing that I am constantly co-creating with my world around me beyond just a spiritual level, but on a practical level, has been a very intense call to action in my life. It doesn't let up on me. But it's also been one that's brought me so much joy in my life. There are days when I wake up and I'm grumpy and I'm moody and I'm blah, 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 all up in my stuff. I have those days, <laughs> more of them than I'd probably like to admit sometimes. But what always happens is when I get present to my power to make a difference in the world, I get present to the call to action that that is, and it immediately starts pulling me out of my grumpiness. It immediately has me looked for a way to be in service every moment of every day. And for me, the best cure I've found for grumpy, moody, woe is me is to get in service to others and to recognize that there's no such thing as another. That if I'm being in service to something perceived as an other, I'm actually being in service to myself because we are all one is actually true. It's actually what's happening. And so as I get in service, I get present to how great my life is. There were days in the tree where I literally thought I couldn't take another day. There were days in the tree where I thought I couldn't take another moment where I thought if I can just have one more breath maybe I'll make it to the next one. I did go through the worst storm in recorded history in California. Not the most brilliant time to go live in a tree. I went through a company trying to kill me. I went through activists who I thought should be allies all of a sudden turning on one another and attacking one another because we haven't done enough work in the community to help us work on our inner wounds as we're trying to change the outer wounds. I went through the experience of dealing with media and how intensely difficult that was, that I would give them my best and what would come out the other end was so disheartening half the time. I mean, you name it, I was under assault. And there were moments where 
I literally was in the fetal position crying and saying, I can't take one more day. One of the most intense things I had to do was to bear witness to a forest that I loved being destroyed and knowing that we will never get that forest back. These are trees that are hundreds to thousands of years old. They're part of an ecosystem that's millions and then billions of years old. We won't get them back once they're destroyed. And I had to bear witness to that. I couldn't go shopping, one of our best ways of numbing ourselves as society. I couldn't go drinking. I couldn't go out to eat. I couldn't go watch a theater. I couldn't do anything but be present to the pain and the grief day in and day out until I was a sobbing mess on my little four by six platform. And I would pray and ask for strength, and the universe would send me another hardship. And I was like, what karma am I working off? <laughs> I'm really sorry. Whatever it is I did, I apologize. I won't do it ever, ever again. <laughs> Give me a break. And then the universe gently tapped me in my mind and said, Julia, you asked for strength. Now, didn't you? <laughs> Oof. I learned we have to be mindful of what we ask for, right? Like, we kind of live in the society where we want to, like, walk into a gym, look at the, the, the uh, equipment, buy our gym membership, and be strong already, right? I know that you all aren't like that. That's why you're here. But you know we have those moments where it's like, do I really got to get on the mat today? Like, really? But we know that the transformation that's possible for us in the practice is only possible in the practice, not by sitting around and just thinking about the practice. And so I had asked the universe for strength, so it gave me more hardships so that I could grow stronger to deal with what was coming next. And in those moments where there was literally all I had was the breath, I got present to the miracle of our breath. In yoga, we do a lot of mindful breathing. But I don't know how oftentimes we stop to think, everyone take a breath together. And then let it out. A miracle just happened. Are we present to the fact? We love how taking a deep breath gets us present, but are we present to the fact that every single time we take a breath, a miracle happens? We are a miracle every breath of every day. And for me, spiritual activation becomes not about a to-do list of things I should do to make a difference in the world or I'm supposed to do. When I'm present to the miracle of my breath, spiritual activation becomes, I recognize that my life is a gift. How can I live my life in a way that honors on a deep level the gift of that breath, that breath, that breath? It takes the work, it takes the practice of being in service out of future outcomes and gets us present to right here, right now. Just like yoga does. If we're thinking too far ahead, we are not doing our yoga practice. And oftentimes we will injure ourselves, we will fall over, or at the very least we won't receive what's available to us that is possible when we're doing the practice and we're completely present to our, to our own practice, to our breath. That, that presence gives us an offering. And for me, this idea of spiritual activation, this idea of service as recognizing that every breath is a gift, every breath is a miracle, how do I want to live my life as an offering to that? So many of us will have some kind of meditation altar where we're, we're honoring different people and places or things in our lives. That's beautiful. I invite you to remember that every moment of every day is the opportunity to actively bow in honor of the gift of the breath, that every choice can be an offering to that breath. The other piece for me is when I got present to the gift of my life, because before that, I oftentimes had the story of how bad my life was, how many things happened to me that were hurtful, how many people were treating me bad and wrong, you know, all that good old story we sometimes like to lug around with us. I was the queen of lugging it around then. I have my moments still, but I was like the queen of all that stuff that happened to me. You know, it's whoo, I had a lot of story around all that story. And uh, the gift of the breath helped me realize that my life is a miracle, no matter what is happening. If I'm present to the miracle of the breath, then I'm present to the miracle of my life, and that's the way I want to be in service. And from that place, I began to realize that every single one of us are ancestors to the future. Every one of us. 